All right, let's move on to the next section where we're talking about actions. So essentially like for one, one important thing is that for lag metrics, right? Um, the metric actions are not applicable. You can't do anything to directly impact a lag metric by definition, it, it lags, right? But you definitely should have metric actions for the for the lead metrics, such as these ones, right? So these should have metric actions. Um, and uh, all of them can, both types, leads and lag, lag metrics, optionally can have um, perpetrator actions. They don't have to, but usually, usually you have one, right? And so this is where you think of, all right, so if I'm realistically going to go from this number to this number, this number to this number, what do I need to do? What do I need to do before I even start as preparation? Like what are the prerequisites effectively? And then once I've got my prerequisites out of the way, how do I impact and get that, get that ball rolling? So this is, or you can think about it as, this is the inertia and this is once you've got, uh, got going. Preparatory, prepar preparatory versus metric actions or driving the metric actions. All right, let's, uh, let's fill this in. All right, so um, preparatory actions um, have been written. So as mentioned before, um, metric actions only apply to lead uh, metrics, um, and for non uh, for for lag for for lag metrics, they just don't have them, right? So right, so for the north star ones, essentially, it's about defining. The preparatory action is about defining exactly how you're going to count these particular proxy metrics. And there's not a uh, standard way to do this. It really will depend on exactly what your uh, company's tech platform happens to do. Um, for example, if it's a Web2 SaaS solution uh, for developers, then you'll have a uh, developer count that's pretty easy to count because it's just the number of signups that you have, right? But, um, and this might be the number of API requests um, that are made um, to, to buy from each uh, developer account, something, something like that. But if it's a Web3 technology, but if it's a Web3 technology, then it becomes harder and you, and you probably need a proxy metric as opposed to an actual account. All right, moving on to dev core components, right? So this is saying, assuming that you don't have any segments and personas defined and you're doing them for the first time, or maybe you already have version one and you want to iterate and create version two, something like that, right? So um, the preparation uh, would be, uh, what, what do you actually want for your segments and personas, right? And so, um, decide on things like I want three of them or you have any parameters for selection of them like I do not want to target a certain group uh, or I want to target a certain group etc. Um, and then this one is a lead metric but it also depends on another lead metric as a prerequisite. And for metric actions, basically is doing the work to create those planning documents. Now, moving on to dev marketing. So let's say your main thrusts are advertising and emails, right? So this could be your lead metric where you craft, the preparatory action is to actually create the text um, or content for those emails and ads. And then this could be setting up inside your tool. For example, if you use HubSpot or, or Orto or something, then you could set up your drip email sequences 
um, through those and you have to set up the triggers to actually send out the content. And then for ads, it'd be pretty much like purchasing and configuring the ads in the various platforms that you use, for example, on Stack Overflow. And yeah, um, this is a lag metric, so it doesn't have a metric action. Moving on to dev education, right? This is where you have to do a lot of work, this, this first one. So you have to do, um, for the metric actions, the code demo repos, write the written tutorials and uh, record the videos that do the walkthrough of uh, those uh, demo repos and the written tutorials in action, right? Um, and so you'd have to create, come up with a content plan. For the demo repos, uh, a preparatory action might to create a base template from which you can base individual tutorials um, as a starting point and with a bunch of standard setup and utility instructions so you don't have to repeat your efforts every time. Um, you could create documentation standards uh, for written tutorials so that they're more consistent. Um, for videos, you know, uh, creating process checklists and an asset library would make, would make for consistency as well as also making more efficient. Likewise, for webinars and meetups, you know, you could submit CFPs and then actually create the content and then deliver it as, the, as your action. Now, uh, right, and then for increasing the number of uh, developers educated, I've actually chosen to split it up into two different ones. And the first one is just like, I've read an article or such a tutorial, or I've watched a video on YouTube, right? So those, I consider them to be passively educated. And then you tend to get higher numbers with those. Now, with um, actively educated, I'm gonna go for lower numbers because that requires more effort and it's harder to get, but it's harder ROI because um, an actively educated developer tends to go along further along the developer journey than a passively educated one. And so therefore it's more value to you um, from a DevRel point of view. Also, more value to the tech company that the DevRel function is a part of as well. So pre, uh, so yeah, so, so and I'm referencing this, right? Um, referencing this one over here as well, right? So creating the base template for demo repos, if you have one, and that one has also incorporated a collection of custom metrics, then you actually can know how many developers have worked, um, like done a particular tutorial, right? So you have to have like some sort of tag or some sort of other bit of information that's being recorded such that when you run your um, analytics tool, you can actually find out, hey, someone actually did this tutorial. So um, that's one way to do it, right? Um, and of course, uh, if you have that in place, then it's just about counting the metrics and you don't actually um, influence the metrics, right? So for example, if you want more actively developer, if you want more actively educated developers, then the way to influence that wouldn't be through this metric directly. It would be through this metric indirectly by creating more demo repos or written tutorials, et cetera, right? Just wanted to show that relationship. Now with developer success, right? Um, we're targeting the uh, number of hackathon bounties being built and number of developer friction points, both in the lead metrics. And so this is what you would do in those cases of hackathons. You want to craft some bounties, target maybe different developer personas, or maybe um, just simplify it by saying, hey, first time using our particular technology versus developers who have used um, our technology or this company's uh, platform before. So they're considered to be seasoned. Right, and have separate sets of bounties for them. That's actually a, quite an effective tactic to um, target um, hackathon attendees. And then you can craft judgment rubrics for um, judges to use to assess them, right? And now here's how you actually influence a metric, right? Once you have prepared for the hackathon, then you'd have to coordinate the budget, usually with a wider team, such as marketing or sales or engineering or product, etc. Come up with a budget based on that, select some events and then sign sponsorship agreements with whoever the hackathon organizers are, right? Um, then there's also content that you have to create for the hackathon attendees. So demo videos, uh, demo repos, maybe even written tutorials as well. And then of course, during the hackathon itself, you'd have to be available to answer questions 
um, help out, etc. Finally, we have um, dev friction points. So this is interesting because every other metric here is decrease, uh, sorry, increase, and this is the only one that's decrease. So let's say you already know that you have this number of uh, friction points and you want target. Okay, I'm going to get rid of a quarter of them, right? Now, this is quite hypothetical, um, and this is actually a pretty difficult one to target because um, it, it's like discovering friction points versus tackling them. Right? So you want to get rid of as many friction points as you want, but you also want to identify them. And those are kind of orthogonal goals, right? So one will increase the number, one will decrease the number. So maybe you might choose um, when you end up with a tricky, um, a trickier um, key result like this one, you might choose to split into different ones or you might choose to keep it as a single one. That's up to you um, on how complex uh, you want to create your OKR um, mechanism, right? So, right, so your preparatory actions could be to um, essentially do uh, user experience testing, but focus on developers, so that's dev developer experience. So that could come in the form of a survey, usability test, or friction audit. Um, there are several others. And conducting them in and of itself could be a lead metric. And then this could be a for identification. And then, and then decreasing the number of dev friction points could be a lag metric. For example, right, and then your metric actions would be through these identifying the friction points, um, and then getting them fixed either via product engineering in the tech platform itself, or to find alternate resolutions yourself and within the real team, for example, to identify workarounds. All right, so that's it. So that rounds out the actions. So we've come up for each of the key results. We've come up with um, a set of preparatory actions. And for each of the key results that happen to be lead metrics, we'll also come up with some metric actions to influence directly the values or getting those numbers to increase. All right. And with that, we have completed the OCRA section, objectives, key results, and um, actions of the, of the, the um, goal setting exercise for the DevRel team. Now, what is next? is defining how you measure these metrics so getting into the details of that and then assigning who is responsible accountable consulted or informed um, so that's the racy section of this and then finally setting some dates um, if you've already decided that this is for a particular quarter then and all of the key results are deliverable within that quarter then you can just have the same dates for everything and if the status you know that's more of a tracking thing, um, so we probably won't need to use that unless you want to use the spreadsheet for tracking as well. So anyway, um, next up we'll cover measurement, followed by RACI, followed by um, date planning.